Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, darling, I wish we weren't going to Julia and Hartley's. I wish we were going home. Why do they always have to have people over at the drop of a holiday? Mm, We'll only stay a few minutes. Just long enough to wish them a happy new year. Then we'll skadoodle. Besides, I, I don't think she expects a crowd. That's good. You see how the egg nods? Mm. I love the nod part, but I could do without the egg. Well, here we are. David, how do I look? Beautiful. You didn't even look. I didn't have to. You're beautiful. David, what's the matter? That chauffeur. What's the matter with him? He's Daphne Baker's chauffeur. That's what's the matter with him. Oh, Daphne Baker. Mm. Isn't she the debutante that Julia wanted you to marry? Oh, she had some kind of an idea about it. Mm. That means Daphne is inside at Julia and Hartley's. I'll get Julia for this. David, do I look all right? You look better than Daphne ever did. Darling, that's very sweet of you. Well, if it isn't David... Come in. Well, hello. Are you butling today, Reggie? No, just avoiding making my entrance for as long as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie, I'd like you to meet uh, Claudia, my wife. Claudia, this is Reggie Finch. Hello, Mr. Finch. Happy New Year. Oh, I'd forgotten you got married. Hello. Very happy indeed. David, how did you get roped into this? Into what? Oh, I didn't mean you, my dear. Well, it sounded as if you did. You certainly did. I meant roped into coming here today. You're, you're sure now that that's what you mean? <laughs> oh, my, yes, I'm sure. <laughs> Your wife's charming and very beautiful. Oh, I say, is Daphne going to be here? Daphne? Uh, Reggie, you don't look too happy about something. Coming to this recital by Julia's latest protege, a musicale on New Year's afternoon. Imagine. Oh, music, huh? You'd think Julia would realize that today we've got quite enough music in our own heads as it is. (laughs) Well, I'm half tempted to turn around and go home. Why can't Julia leave music in the concert hall where it belongs? Then you go in when you want to and leave if you want to. It's a disease with Julia, and on New Year's Day. It's sure to prove fatal with me. I thought you liked music. I David. love it, but I hate sitting around trying to look appreciative. David, you haven't changed at all, thank goodness. <laughs> uh, we've sat through any number of Julia's music hours, haven't we? <laughs> Too many, and this is the last one. Oh, that's what I always say, but here I am. By the way, you weren't up in Newport at all last summer, were you? No, I escaped. I got married. Uh, Newport really isn't the same as it used to be before the war. Not the same at all. Mm, That's good. Well, we might as well go in and face the music. As long as he doesn't play any louder, it'll be all right. We'd better stay out here until he's finished. I wish Julie had an old pair of earmuffs kicking around with an ice bag attached. (laughs) David, he's playing the Beethoven minuet. I used to play that on the piano. You used to play that. Of course, it didn't sound this way, but it was my thousand-dollar piece. When we get a piano, darling, I'll play it for you. I can hardly wait. (laughs) David, point Daphne out to me. Pointing is rude. Can't you wait? If I point her out to you, you tell me if I'm right? I will not. Is that she over there on the corner of the sofa, that pretty blonde girl? The one without... Too much charm? You are a mean little hussy. Then that is Daphne. Poor Daphne. Why poor Daphne? No charm. And no you. Uh, That's our cue. Take a deep breath. In we go. Claudia, David. Ah, you're here. Hello, Julia. Happy New Year, Julia. Don't I get greeted, Julia? Of course, Reggie. So glad to see you. Oh, you're not looking very well. I'm not feeling very well. Fine <laughs> way to start the new year. Hello there, my dear. Hello, Hartley. Hello, You're Arthur. just in time for one more piece. I'm sorry you couldn't hear the rest. It was marvelous. Oh, I'm sorry we're late, Julia. No matter. 
Reggie, you come over here. There's a place right next to Daphne, just for you. Uh, Claudia, David... Uh, we'll sit down right here, Julia. This will be fine. Good. We'll talk later. Move over a little, my dear. Make room for me. I'd love to. Come on, Hartley, sit down. Well, everybody, we're going to have a pièce de résistance now. Mr. Abraham Goldman, a distinguished graduate of the Yale Conservatory and the Peabody Institute, will give us his very special and widely known rendition of the Horace Staccato, as transcribed by Yasha Heifetz from the original composition by Dennis Hugh. Well, I've heard this on the violin hardly, but never on the organ. I hope he hasn't bitten off more than he can chew. It's going to be tough. Well, it's his neck. Do please go right ahead, Mr. Goldman. And now, Mr. Goldman. <laughs> doubt about it once he'd started. He's got a beautiful technique, Hartley. An amazingly facile touch. Excellent. Really excellent. I'd like to hear him play some Bach. I've got to hand it to Julia. She put one over on us this time. Well, I'm afraid that's all we can ask of you, Mr. Goldman. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, Hartley, my dear, would you mind coming over here a moment? No, not at all. I, I, I'll be back in a moment. Don't you run away. Even Reggie Finch seemed to enjoy it. And Daphne... She had such a dreamy look. Poor Daphne. Julia's arranging things between her and Reggie Finch now. Will you stop calling her poor Daphne? She's got about three million dollars to play around oh, with. Three million dollars? You've got that. You don't need charm. You little cat. Oh, darling, maybe Julia was right. Maybe you should have married Daphne. No, I'll make my first three million myself, thank you. <laughs> David, think of all the people she could have introduced you to. She must have terrific connections. And even if Newport isn't the way it was before the war, still it is Newport, isn't it? And Coney Island is still Coney Island, and I prefer Coney Island. You mean you think I'm Coney Island? <laughs> you really, darling? Here comes Daphne now. How do I look? You've got whiskers and a long, furry tail. David! Well, that wasn't bad, was it? David, I stayed awake very nicely. Hello, Daphne. David, you're looking marvelous. And is this Claudia? It is. Hello. I've heard a lot about you. I've been wanting to call you to give you my very best wishes for a very happy life. Well, that's very nice of you, Daphne. Well, well I... I... Oh, excuse me. Excuse me? Well, you look very well, Daphne. Thank you. Excuse me, but I see the eggnog bowl is about to make its appearance. I'll be right back. Oh, uh... Oh, David, my boy. Oh, hello, Hartley. I've been wanting to talk to you. As you know, uh, probably Rogers offered me a question. No, David? Yes, David. 
marriage seems to agree with David. Oh, do you really think so? I do really think so. He has the look of a happy man. Julia told me he's become a partner in Roger's firm. Yes, it happened Christmas Eve. It was quite a surprise for us. Really? Well, not to me. I expected it for David. He's such a talented architect. How nice of you to say that. David and I are old friends. I know. You've known him a lot longer than I have. You probably even know a lot more about him than I do. I know so little of David's world before I met him. It happens. I've always been very fond of David. Of course, I only said a few words to Reggie Finch as he came in, but I think he's very nice, too. Reggie? Mm -hmm. He's sweet. He's always been sweet. I prefer my dogs. Dogs? Have you got a lot of dogs? Well, I breed them. I must have about a hundred by now. One hundred? Of course, I don't keep that number. I sell them or breed them for friends. One hundred dogs? I've only got one. Do you show him? I only just got him. I, I don't think dogs like to be shown. Oh, my dogs seem to love it. They're French poodles. You mean the dogs without anything in the back? Mm. Our dog is a Great Dane. A Great Dane? Yes. Well, what's it like to own a Great Dane? Wonderful and exhausting. <laughs> David adores him. It must be uh, rather overpowering. I might even like it. I don't think a man should be without a Great Dane. Well, maybe someday I'll have a Great Dane. Goodbye, Claudia. It's been nice meeting you. Oh, Daphne, are you leaving? Uh, I'm meeting Mother for dinner. But isn't Reggie taking you home? Oh, don't bother him. He seems to be having such a nice time. Well, hello. How's my debutante wife? David. Poor Daphne. Are you still saying poor Daphne? When I first saw her, I guess I was a little catty. But now I know all she's got is no charm. Three million dollars, one hundred poodles, and... And, and Julia trying to marry her off to Reggie Finch. Everybody's always trying to marry poor Daphne off. She was in love with you. Don't we know anybody good for her? Now, Claudia, don't you too? You know that when you try and fix something up for somebody, it, it never works out. David, if somebody tried to fix us up, would we have worked? I doubt it. You do? How can you say such a thing? But look, darling... Since nobody tried to fix us up, since we just happened, how would you like to go home? I'd love to go home. I wanted to go home in the beginning. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Happy New Year, friends. Your bottler of Coca-Cola and the cast of Claudia are happy to greet you on this first day of what we all hope will be a better year for the whole world. And we regard it as a privilege that we've been able to spend some time this happy holiday with you and your family. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. Thank you.